So the Democratic Party primary in Kentucky was definitely one to watch because I think it's one of the most important primary races in all of 2020 because this will determine who's going to face off against Mitch McConnell in November, who we desperately need to defeat. And, um, you know, I would be making an understatement if I said that I didn't have faith that Amy McGrath could actually get the job done. This is someone who's literally running as a pro-Trump Democrat. We tried this basically back in 2014 with Alison Lundergan Grimes, who ran as a conservative Democrat, and she got her clock cleaned by Mitch McConnell. But even she sees the writing on the wall, and she endorsed the insurgent lefty this time. Charles Booker, who actually believes in policies that would help people in Kentucky. And a poll just showed last week that if you want to beat Mitch McConnell, it's still going to be difficult, but Charles Booker is the one who can get it done. So this race is so important because if we mess this up, we get another six years of Mitch McConnell, who is one of the most destructive politicians in American history, not just in this modern era, in American history, because he gets things done. He gets Donald Trump's justices approved, right? He knows how to basically take what is a toothless demagogue in Donald Trump and actually make him effective, right? Carry out his will. So we've got to beat Mitch McConnell. And, um, yeah, I think that you all get that if you're watching this program. But people in uh, Kentucky, they voted today. And we don't have all the results. We're not going to know right away. It's probably going to be days until we know for sure who's the winner. Uh, but with 54.41% of precincts reporting, Amy McGrath is currently leading by about 5,000 votes. However, before you get too down, as USA Polling points out, the Washington Post has votes in from Lexington, Fayette County, and Booker has a 50-point lead. If that's accurate, Booker will win the Kentucky Senate, still waiting for more votes to come in. So even if it looks as if Amy McGrath is the favorite currently, that's true, but Booker slowly but surely is closing the lead, and I'm not going to count him out just yet, right, until every single vote is counted. But this race, it's already an uphill battle because of the shenanigans that are taking place. So a day before people voted, we found out that Kentucky was cutting the number of polling stations from 3,700 down to 200. That is a 95% reduction, which leaves places like Jefferson County in Louisville with just one polling place for hundreds of thousands of residents. So naturally, if you tell hundreds of thousands of people that they have one place where they can vote, well, then what's going to happen? That's a form of voter suppression. Not everyone will get their voices heard. And the people who managed to make it to the polls, I mean, it's going to be sheer chaos. Of course, there was a traffic jam because everyone is trying to, you know, show up to these polling stations that have been reduced. And a lot of people couldn't make it to the polls on a weekday, you know, before 6 p.m. because there was a traffic jam, which led a lot of people at a particular expo not being able to vote. They locked the doors literally at 6 p.m. sharp and people just were shut out. They clearly wanted to vote, but thankfully they opened back up. The deadline was extended by a half an hour, but since the number of polling stations was reduced, since more people wanted to make their voices heard, Booker filed an injunction to try to extend the polling time, keep it open for at least another couple of hours. He wanted to close at 9 p.m. I think that that's reasonable because this is happening on a weekday, right? It's a Tuesday. People are getting off of work, trying to rush to the polls. There's traffic because everyone is trying to go to the same polling place. It's it's just it's chaotic so if you want there to be democracy you have to give people at least more time i mean they should have the option to vote by mail they should have more than just one polling station for you know um a county with hundreds of thousands of people but if you're not going to give them that at least let them have a couple of extra hours to vote a judge said no to that. So as Tal Axelrod of The Hill reports, a Kentucky judge denied a request from State Representative Charles Booker's Senate campaign to keep polls open in Jefferson County until 9 p.m. The judge noted that the court had already ordered that individuals who were at the polling place by 6.30 p.m. be allowed to cast their votes and that concerns over a traffic jam preventing people from arriving before polls closed were based on speculation. This court has ordered that individuals who are present inside the doors of the Expo Center no later than 6.30 p.m. shall be permitted to vote to accommodate those who are present at the Expo Center. Otherwise, the request that polls remain open until 9 p.m. due to traffic congestion is based on speculation. Rather than any evidence that specific individual voters cannot reach the Expo Center, the judge ruled. Yeah, so this is supposed to be a democracy, and it's a joke. 
I mean, you cut polling stations by 95%, at least give them a few more hours to vote, but they won't even do that. So you've got to understand that this reduction in polling stations during the primary, it helps Amy McGrath. It helps her, right? Because if you cut the number of polling stations down to one in an area where a large portion of Kentucky's black population lives, I mean, that's going to hurt the progressive. That's going to hurt Charles Booker. So this is going to help her now. But, you know, during the general, if she actually does win, which I hope she doesn't, um, this is going to hurt her. So I hope that Charles Booker wins because he is the one who could beat Mitch McConnell and it's going to be tough either way because he's up against not just a political behemoth, but voter suppression, right? Shenanigans that we're going to have to deal with. So, you know, this is a race to watch. Don't get down yet. Charles Booker can still win. Um, you know, it's not looking good at this moment in time, but don't count him out. Let's wait for the votes to come in. The numbers are still, you know, coming in as I film this. So we don't necessarily know what's going to happen, but it's frustrating that people are experiencing so much strife just trying to make their voice heard. It, it's, it's beyond infuriating. It shouldn't be like this. Um, but in spite of everything that's happening for Charles to be performing this well, it really speaks to the need for progressivism in politics like people in Kentucky a deep red state they want to elect someone like Charles Booker and you know there's just all these obstacles to them making their voices heard so you know we will see what happens I'm crossing my fingers and I'm rooting for Charles Booker because I want to get Mitch McConnell out and that means we have to elect the strongest person and the most electable person in this instance is not the safe choice, the pro-Trump Democrat. No, it's Charles Booker, the lefty who actually inspires people.